Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Yurita Rekwamadar, the country coordinator for Europe South Japan. I would like to welcome you to the Meet Your Science webinar series, the first in the series, and a very warm welcome and uh, gratitude to Dr. Gerimina Sermanauskas. And he is the first consular and head of science, innovation, digital, and other EU policies section at the delegation of the European Union to Japan. Um, first of all, I would like to raise my mug to our attendees and also to uh, the consular. Thank you for uh, being with us here today. Uh, basically, it's um, if if this webinar were in real um, in real space and and time, we would actually have um, a setting in a cafe. But um, at the moment, we'll have to contend with the virtual setting on Zoom. Okay, um, this particular series um, is welcoming science counselors who are actually posted to Japan from various European countries. And as I said, this is the first in our series and uh, I would like to welcome um, Ganemina Sermanouskas who is, so to say, the coordinator of all, all the other science counselors since he's posted to the um, European Union, the Europa House. Okay, so um, questions, if I may. Indeed, thank you very much, Judith, for inviting me to this event. I'm really very honored. And hello to everyone. Uh, such a lovely sunny day. I think we're gonna have a relaxed, nice informal discussion. And uh, I really want to congratulate your access uh, with launching uh, this series of events. I believe it will be of interest to many colleagues who are interested in uh, science diplomacy and maybe see themselves uh, pursuing this career at some point in the future. So I will be very glad to share all my memories and knowledge about the field. So I'm looking forward to your questions and nice discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so basically the first question, okay, um, how did you, uh, how did your professional development lead you to becoming a science diplomat? Um, what was your educational and career path that brought you to your current position? I'm sorry, that's already two questions. And um, it seems that science diplomacy is not a traditional path, um, so to say. So what, um, what kind of um, background, you know, do appointees typically come from? What sort of walks of life? Indeed, it's a, a very good, essential question. And uh, I noticed that my professional experience and uh, educational background is already presented in the announcement of this event. So I'll, I'll be as brief as possible. Uh, my first degree was in engineering economics. I studied in Vilnius Civil Engineering Institute. I'm Lithuanian and uh, started my academic and professional career there. Uh, and during my last year of studies, I started working for international department of our university. It was a part-time job, but at that time I got really strongly interested in international affairs. I felt that it is such a rewarding combination working on international issues and in this context, working with academia, with, with academia, for academia, uh, because I witnessed numerous inspiring discussions, uh, met a number of enthusiastic people, enthusiastic scientists. So I thought that this combination is a really good match with my worldview, my attitude, and uh, with my personality. Um, and looking to my educational uh, career, educational uh, path and the professional career afterwards, I see that in many instances, uh, there was again a combination of international and uh, 
uh, acad academic uh, uh, things. Uh, why? First of all, I was really uh, very, very successful to get uh, uh, a scholarship from Japanese government, which allowed me to come to do my PhD studies here in Japan. And uh, upon return, uh, my first job was again in uh, our parliament where I joined the uh, Committee of International Affairs as an advisor. Uh, then again, I worked on various international topics afterwards. And uh, I also was successful in my competition uh, organized by European Personnel Selection Office. And when Lithuania became a, a member state of EU, uh, these competitions became open for citizens of uh, this uh, region as well. So I was successful and became an official. And gradually, again, I moved more and more into the international area. While uh, I started in Secretariat General, um, and I worked on administrative modernization issues, topics mostly related with um, project management um, at the global level, and in general, um, kind of modernizing the way uh, various processes within the commission are uh, managed. Uh, my next job was already in the international area. I joined the team of uh, colleagues in the DG environment, at that time, there was no DG of climate action. So there was a, a separate directorate which dealt with climate issues. And within this directorate, there was a team of people who would go to these uh, uh, so-called COPs uh, every year, negotiations, uh, UNFCCC negotiations. And I was also covering one of its chapters, technology transfer, maybe. And then uh, my third, uh, place in uh, the commission where I worked was DG Research and Innovation, where I have been working since 2012, and I worked on different files. And uh, here it is uh, my combination of being uh, in the commission, having experience in Japan, um, academic background allowed me to uh, uh, be eligible for competing for this post. So I'm very glad that I uh, am now in this country working with uh, the people whom I believe, I, uh, whose culture I, I believe I know quite intimately. Uh, because I, when I came for the first time to do my PhD research, I spent quite some time here. Uh, on the top of that, even on personal level, my uh, son was born here. So indeed, um, I have very strong uh, you know, emotional memories about this country. And I believe that uh, my knowledge of uh, beliefs, values, attitudes of uh, people in this fascinating country uh, can be useful in building bridges between the EU in Japan and, and the academic field. And I myself worked in academia upon return. I, I, I was teaching strategic management. I was also supervising uh, theses of uh, colleagues. I also published some articles, uh, also in collaboration with uh, colleagues from uh, foreign countries, for example, from Norway. We, we had strong collaboration with BI, Norwegian Institute of uh, Management. So uh, indeed, uh, I think uh, that uh, whatever I did in my life was in one way or another linked to where I am now. So probably that's the, the reply. Yeah, in a gist. Thank you so much. Well, uh, the second question is actually the second question um, series, if you like, is connected to your job. So can you explain what being a science mm. diplomat means and what's actually involved in that? Mm. The key purpose of science uh, diplomat is, of course, to put science, 
research innovation as high on the agenda of bilateral collaboration as possible. So it means that science diplomat on every occasion tries to draw attention to opportunities of collaboration in science, uh, to draw attention to importance of science and research in really resolving uh, issues, uh, challenges that our societies are facing. And uh, this is really, uh, really uh, uh, the core task. But in a daily um, activities, of course, science diplomats have a variety of tasks that uh, are sometimes could look routine or even boring, uh, just ordinary administrative work, like planning, organizing, coordinating, preparing meetings, preparing events, uh, preparing various documents, uh, analytical work, reporting to the uh, headquarters, uh, maintaining dialogue with interlocutors uh, locally, uh, and promoting uh, certain events uh, and uh, also ensuring that certain ideas, that certain way of thinking also uh, can find a path into uh, agendas of uh, the administration here. Uh, so we really push as much as we can to promote uh, our way of seeing uh, how scientific collaboration could be beneficial to both sides. At the same time, science diplomats need to be very good at listening and first seek to understand before wish to be understood. So ability to uh, really listen, observe, uh, and have a kind of sense of empathy and uh, 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 ability to see uh, things from the perspective of uh, your interlocutor is something that really matters a lot. And of course, this helps in building strong uh, personal relations and uh, relations that are built on trust, which then uh, spill over into various positive outcomes. So this is something really essential. And one more important thing is, um, science diplomat needs to be enthusiastic about what he or she is doing. Because you know, probably will recall a book of uh, Khalil Gibran, it's called Prophet, where he said that um, work is uh, love made visible. It means that Whenever you do something with uh, enthusiasm, with love, it, it, it is not, noticed by other people and it is, gets appreciated. And it also helps you to achieve what you want to achieve because when people see that something matters to you, it starts to matter to them. So it also leads to kind of leading by uh, example. And of course, at the top of our uh, agenda is uh, promoting for, for Europe and for EU science diplomats, promoting our key framework program, Horizon Europe, with uh, all uh, documents that accompany uh, this uh, regulation. Um, we try to again uh, promote uh, reciprocity. We try to promote uh, openness in our interactions and collaboration and uh, openness as far as access to uh, various research programs is concerned, uh, open dialogue, etc. So it's a really broad mixture of various tasks, but with the one end in mind to co-create and uh, co-implement the ideas that we discuss together and then it becomes a kind of co-owned ideas that then really um, 
much is much easier to uh, push forward and translate into actions. That's Thank probably you. my reply. Thank you so much. Um, you're going to uh, turn back to how we actually coordinate with colleagues uh, later, but um, another personal question on what's actually your favorite, uh, one of your favorite memories working in science diplomacy. So something that's very close to your heart, maybe some great experience. Uh, indeed, it's a very good question. Indeed, I have many, but all of them are linked with people, actually. Because I was really blessed uh, to have a chance to interact with enthusiastic and very competent people. And this is something that uh, is, I find very rewarding in my work. And, uh, and I meet people like this in various organizations in ministries, funding agencies, in universities. Uh, I see different worldviews, different uh, perceptions on how things should be, how they should uh, uh, be interconnected. And uh, I especially enjoyed my visits to universities uh, where in the context of promoting opportunities of Horizon 2020, we had various events. And in the margins of these um, uh, visits, uh, the local uh, universities or research establishments would organize uh, for us some uh, uh, study tours uh, to, to see their facilities. So indeed, I, I had a chance to see impressive facilities. Um, and I recall, I, I can give, give just couple of examples, Okinawa uh, Institute of Science and Technology is an impressive example of how internationalization and uh, kind of boldness in testing new ideas can lift up uh, really the, the level of uh, um, performance, because I know that they uh, are ranked very high as far as um, uh, publications and uh, uh, journals is concerned. And uh, in general, they have very unique, I would say, uh, logic of promoting collaboration of scientists um, across uh, various uh, diverse fields. Uh, they, they, even in the architecture of the building itself, uh, they consciously envisage certain areas that would allow people from very diverse research fields to come together. Even when entering into the building, you, you have a long corridor towards the elevator. And it, I was told that it was done on purpose so that on their way between the door to the elevator, they have a chance to meet more people and have a chat. So, uh, I, in, in other facilities, I also was uh, really uh, impressed by, by the level of dedication and uh, the level of uh, really commitment to uh, the details. I would say that uh, in, I have an impression that in Japan, scientists delve so deeply into the details uh, of whatever they are studying, they want to know. Uh, everything, literally everything. So they, they choose normally relatively narrow area and delve very, very, very deeply. Uh, so, so this was an uh, interesting uh, discovery for me too. And speaking of other uh, facilities, of course, um, I recall uh, some others uh, in Hiroshima University I was impressed by Amphibian Research Center where their experiments with various amphibians uh, may lead to important breakthroughs in uh, regenerative medicine. Or, or in the same university venture business laboratory also left me with a strong impression because these people were so enthusiastic and they were completely dedicated to look for ideas from all over the world 
uh, in order to really build on the uh, best uh, knowledge uh, the business laboratory which would allow to move ideas as fast as possible from the stage of their generation to the stage of commercialization and uh, the explanation of how it worked and uh, and what results they achieved with and with what resources really uh, made me very impressed and i could of course talk a lot about other facilities like other institutions and uh, really like to uh, make use of this opportunity to thank uh, all these institutions and uh, of course the list would not be exhausted but i can mention Osaka University, Kyushu University, uh, Kansai University, Kyoto University, Senda University, Kanazawa University, Chuo University, many others. I am so grateful to all of them. It was such an impressive uh, to see how they work and, and, and what they have achieved. Thank you so much. So that's, uh, that's probably me, my Let reply. me power it through with the next question. So um, what's the role of the EU delegation to Japan in promoting science and technology partnerships and developments? Um, right. Would probably uh, link this to another question because we are uh, running out of time. Um, maybe we could link this to new platforms um, that have been developed to support science knowledge networks. Mm -hmm. These are somewhat related. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Uh, of course, the role, the overarching role of EU delegation is to represent EU in Japan with all its policies. As far as science and technology is concerned, at the core of our collaboration is our uh, agreement, cooperation agreement on uh, SNT cooperation which uh, dates back to 2009. In 2009, it was uh, assigned, but then it went into force in 2011. So this year, we celebrate 10 years from um, entering into force of this agreement. And this agreement actually is worth reading to everyone who is interested in uh, collaboration between the EU and Japan. It's a relatively short document, but it sets the framework for our, for our collaboration. So the role of delegation is to ensure that what has been envisaged in this document gets implemented, that we really uh, make everything possible to ensure that uh, uh, the envisaged uh, activities, the envisaged uh, uh, meetings, the envisaged roles are fully, fully uh, respected. And, um, and, and of course, uh, other agreements and other documents um, uh, create also very important framework for science and technology uh, debate. The fact that we have uh, economic partnership agreements, strategic partnership agreement, the fact that we signed letter of intent last year for, to, to enhance collaboration in science innovation, the fact that research and innovation is mentioned very, very, and plays a really a prominent role in recent summit documents uh, is also favor, favorably uh, reflecting on our collaboration because we can always refer to them uh, for um, the kind of endorsement of what we are doing. Indeed, uh, in this uh, summit documents tell that research and innovation uh, activities of paramount importance to really fight the pandemics, fight challenges of climate change, to uh, seek a green economy, uh, to pursue digitalization agenda, etc. So it's something really essential. Uh, and both sides understand that this is mutually beneficial. And importantly, both EU and Japan are like-minded partners we see many things similarly and it's very easy to spot uh, when looking to the recent documents adopted by the japanese government for example if we look at the sixth basic plan on sti of japan 
we see that they see the world very similarly. They uh, point out to similar challenges. Uh, they, they see similar solutions. They also understand and strongly believe that uh, collaboration, working together is something that uh, really uh, makes a big difference. Because in the end, it is about linking the best minds in the world and scaling it up. So what we are doing is we are linking the best minds in certain fields here in Japan, those in the EU, and then expanding it multilaterally and building up. So, so and this is very exciting and very motivating in our job. Now speaking about uh, various platforms to support um, uh, knowledge networks. Of course, in the EU, uh, the Joint Research Center is European Commission's uh, Science and Knowledge Service. They recruit scientists that work on, who, who work on uh, really uh, providing scientific evidence for the policy. And uh, actually quite recently, they established uh, a platform which is called Knowledge for Policy. And they have very ambitious goals uh, they, they want to make this platform the center of the whole knowledge. So they put together uh, various knowledge services, knowledge centers, competence centers that exist uh, in the EU and, uh, and elsewhere, so that in this knowledge base, you can find everything. So it would be kind of one-stop shop. So indeed, EU understands that sharing knowledge and openness in science are very essential. Uh, you, you are, I believe you are aware that uh, you strongly believe that if research was funded by public resources, so it means from the taxpayers' uh, money, it needs to be openly available. Its results need to be publicly available. So this, this is the way we see it. And the same applies to in general knowledge uh, we, we wanted to make difference. We wanted to translate into positive outcomes to, to as large degree as possible. So okay, yes, that's that's my reply. Indeed, indeed. Thank you so much. Um, there are so many questions still. Um, so let me just have a look. Hmm. I would say again, if you don't mind combining two questions, uh, most departments within an embassy arguably focus a significant amount of effort on political relationship with the host country. For research and innovation, however, you must work with a wide variety of stakeholders. So what types of organizations do you need uh, and work with on a regular basis? And um, I, I guess we could maybe link this to the next question. Um, what kind of tools and mechanisms does the EU delegation use to facilitate collaborations and exchange of researchers? And what resources are available to scientists and researchers in Japan? So both sides, basically, what's available, what you can provide, and on the other side, um, yeah, what do you actually get um, from uh, the EU side uh, with regards to policy networks and so forth? Uh, thank you. Indeed, uh, looking at the delegation, uh, uh, it is obvious that it is staffed with colleagues who come from various services, uh, and um, each section and each colleague within the section has clearly defined tasks and responsibilities, because in many instances, each colleague is delegated by specific DG or some DGs, where there are so-called so -called shared posts. Uh, and they work chiefly on those areas. But uh, with Horizon Europe and with new global approach to research innovation, we are promoted so promoting so-called uh, Team Europe approach. And we are promoting uh, also collaboration with, between different colleagues uh, within the delegation who, who are assigned from different uh, directors general. So indeed, uh, even though it seems that uh, looking from probably um, a side, it seems that uh, certain areas are more covered than the others. In fact, it's uh, not necessarily the case because um, we work as a team. 
we uh, exchange information and our efforts are mutually reinforcing each other. So for instance, looking at the research innovation, there is no abstract research innovation. The research innovation is always on certain specific topics. So it means it can be on climate, then we deal with colleagues who deal with climate, on uh, recycling, on oceans. Again, we have also colleagues who work with specific directors general, and, and we interact, but that's the approach that we promote. Uh, so this is mutually reinforcing and we inform each other, of course, about uh, meetings that we had, uh, we share relevant information, uh, we contribute together to joint briefings and, and we quickly have access to uh, latest news on, on specific items. So um, indeed, uh, I believe that research and innovation is a very good uh, example of kind of cross-cutting area that unites unites so many, many areas. And of course, work on politics creates a great umbrella, all the positive developments that creates a great umbrella for um, positive outcomes in our dialogue with uh, this interlocutor. Um, so uh, that's probably my reply. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Again, let me just proceed with the next work because we still have a lot to cover. Um, here, I really would like to draw attention to your upcoming webinar on the 7th of July, and it's actually connected to the Horizon um, uh, Europe Lounge. Um, Horizon Europe is previously known as Horizon 2020. So many of these projects are funded under the EU Research Innovation Programs Horizon Europe. Can you discuss this briefly? Um, so yes. this indeed, indeed. Webinar. And now I re recall the second part of your question, uh, previous question about the opportunities for the Japanese uh, scientists, researchers uh, for various research exchanges. Indeed, uh, on next week on the 7th, we have uh, an online event to celebrate the launch of Horizon Europe in Japan. It's really one off events, but it's first in its series. Of events, it's likely that we will then replicate it in, a, in different formats. Uh, in, 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 uh, but this one is really kind of um, the key event, the main one. We will have a um, uh, number of speakers from that we invited um, if, that could come from key for, from institutions who are our key interlocutors funding agencies, ministries. Uh, but the key purpose of the event is to explain to Japanese research and innovation uh, community opportunities uh, in Horizon Europe. So we want to explain what is in it for them. So after briefly explaining what Horizon Europe uh, is all about, what are the novelties, we will look at the work program that was uh, recently published. Uh, and we will look to the calls where Japan is flagged or, or we will speak about opportunities, um, including those of uh, exchanges of researchers that are provided by this program because in Horizon Europe, there is a whole set of uh, various actions which are called Marie Sklodowska Curie actions uh, that are meant to facilitate exchanges of uh, researchers, scientists, uh, in various formats, and they will also be presented. All the novelties will be presented. So uh, indeed, I highly recommend all of the colleagues uh, who are interested in Horizon Europe to attend this event, and I'm very grateful to your access that you will also help in spreading the message about this event. Uh, uh, the yep. prior registration is not necessary, you just follow the link and all information will be there. And of course, it, as a follow up, we will be happy to again explain you and uh, the details. And if your organizations get interested in certain elements, we would be happy again to organize separate meetings, online events with you to explain these details to you. We so, actually have a question from the audience. Um, it says Horizon Europe started. Does Japan participate as a third country? Yeah, so that's the that's, question. 
indeed japan uh, has a status of um, the third country uh, and um, japan along with some other countries who are like like-minded countries as far as values beliefs attitudes the political systems are concerned and um, also in this group of countries uh, all the countries have strong uh, potential in science research and innovation so this group has an opportunity to consider uh, the interest in uh, joining uh, Horizon Europe as an associated country. And we already see a good example of uh, this development as one of the countries that are eligible, for example, Canada, uh, during uh, summit of EU Canada, it was announced that uh, Canada will be entering exploratory discussions on the association. So it's a nice sign, a nice example to um, uh, other countries to really that working together under the umbrella of Horizon Europe is really beneficial to everyone. It's a unique program, the largest in the world, unique research innovation program. And uh, it has enormous opportunities. And uh, of course, being associated country, uh, Japan, Jap if Japan decides to, to, to pursue this path, of course, uh, then there is certain procedure that uh, you know, would need to, to be followed, including negotiations, etc. So uh, at the moment, we are still not there, but uh, we will, of course, we maintain the dialogue with our Japanese colleagues and explain them uh, the program, the benefits of association, and of course, we would be open to consider their interest if it is expressed. Mm -hmm. Okay, let us ask about coronavirus. It's a very timely topic. Unfortunately, it has been uh, for the for the past uh, one and a half years or so. So, what has the EU response to the coronavirus been, and how does the state of emergency in Japan factor into your work? Since you work mm -hmm. in mobility and uh, and uh, you know international cooperation, it must have affected your work exponentially. Yes, indeed, the European Commission is coordinating a common response of all EU countries. So the, at the core is an attempt to strengthen public health systems in the member states, and uh, also to help the member states to again address issues locally by uh, certain measures and uh, by access to vaccines, etc. And um, for that purpose, also at political level, President of the European Commission uh, uh, von der Leyen established the coronavirus response team, uh, which then coordinated um, uh, these uh, responses. And indeed, uh, what we see uh, in Europe now is uh, really very positive developments. In my home country, about half of the population have been uh, vaccinated. Uh, in Belgium, where the commission is uh, more than 70% of population have been vaccinated. Europe starts removing various restrictions this summer, so we see positive trends. And uh, speaking of uh, the fight against uh, the coronavirus, we see that from the very beginning, Europe took an initiative and organized various events to mobilize funding for uh, research. And the vaccines were developed in record short time, and indeed. And uh, all these efforts were done in various countries. So commissions, coordination efforts, and initiative helped a lot in really putting these minds, uh, these resources together, these different countries together. And it sets a good example for the future. And with this in mind, uh, during recent uh, events, we, last week, there were research and innovation day. Uh, there were research and innovation days. Uh, it's a main uh, uh, kind of event where uh, 
main outreach event where Horizon Europe uh, and uh, our uh, search innovation policies presented. A new portal has been launched by Commissioner Gabriel. The, the portal's title is uh, Coronavirus Research and Innovation Portal. And on this portal, scientists from all over the world can look for partners, can look uh, for, for, for partners to publish, for partners to apply for funding, for uh, partners to share data. And we are very glad to see also participants from Japan in this portal. So it's also a, a, a good example uh, of uh, really international collaboration. I know that the Japan um, Science and Technology Agency is, uh, so is also joined, which is a very, very positive development. So, uh, so, so I believe that uh, indeed, and on the top of that, Europe is not only solving problems within EU as far as coronavirus, uh, fighting, fighting coronavirus pandemic is concerned. The EU is also sharing its resources, its vaccines with countries all over the world, including with Japan. Uh, so, uh, indeed, uh, this is also a very, very positive example that will uh, lead to a positive spillovers in the future in uh, other policy areas as well, right, for sure, including research and innovation. So, it's Europe at its best, so to say. Indeed, indeed. Thank you so much. And um, my last question, and then afterwards, uh, you might actually like to uh, supplement that with um, something else that you think is important to uh, convey to your audience. But the last question that I would uh, like to ask is what would you recommend to young to a young person or young persons in the early stages of uh, their career or education? Um, so um, what kind of jobs or what kind of path they would have to take to enter science diplomacy? Indeed. It's an excellent question. Um, the most important thing in uh, seeking your goals uh, in professional life, in, uh, in personal life, in, in uh, educational um, uh, the path is determination and uh, continuous learning. Continuous learning, determination, and certain uh, features of personality. I believe that the person who would like to become a science diplomat just has to have this vision in mind that he wants to be there, he or she wants to be there. And then naturally, he or she will start searching for data. He or she will naturally join right networks, meet right people, um, probably choose, uh, uh, is assigned to do a certain type of uh, uh, tasks within the organization that he, he or she works. Uh, and indeed, uh, and everything starts from small steps. Actually, the most important first thing that everyone can do is to develop the right habits. Because first you develop certain habits, but, and then habits shape you. Because if you have a habit each morning to do to exercise or to read, to learn the language, to, to, to allocate some time to learn the language, or you, you get, get a habit to do certain things at certain time and do it consistently, persistently, then it will naturally lead you to where you want to be. And of course, uh, as far as personality traits are concerned, it is important to have uh, good communication skills so that you can not only be understood but also understand communication skills, listening skills uh, and what always helps is being creative. See opportunities where others see threats, uh, uh, see things differently, be bold and brave. Be bold to, and brave to challenge status quo. Be bold and brave to test new things. 
to put new pieces of knowledge, to, to old pieces of knowledges together in different way and see what happens. So there are so many interesting um, uh, things uh, that can be looked at very closely. And uh, after closer uh, look, you see that certain solutions come naturally where it was so difficult to imagine that uh, uh, certain problems can, can be resolved. But in general, it is always less, like in every career path, a mixture of your efforts, your de determination, and uh, of course you will need a bit of luck. A bit of luck, uh, but I believe luck comes when you are determined and uh, have a strong will to be where you want to be, have clear vision. And if a person does not want to be a scientific diplomat, but wants to, but is just interested in science diplomacy, of course, there is a plenty of documents uh, that are explaining uh, various sides of science diplomacy. Because in the end, to put it simply, it is about building collaborations in order to do something in the field of science, research, innovation that is mutually of interest. So it's, the key word is about building collaboration. If you have the skills to do it, you are a good scientific diplomat. If not, then you, you could be a good administrator and you could administer science and innovation as well. So there are various elements and various sides in science diplomacy that um, allow to different types of people to, uh, to really find fulfillment in what they are doing in this field. Thank you, That's what a great problem. advice. I hope that um, young, uh, uh, young educators, uh, young science um, uh, researchers, and basically people who are interested in this field will follow your advice. And I was just wondering if uh, there is anything else you would like to add. Uh, I'm trying to think if I have covered all the questions or there is anything else that you would like to uh, convey to the audience. Um, I would like to thank audience for their attention. And I would like to emphasize that if you enter this area, science diplomacy, you, you will never be bored. It is so interesting. So exciting. So uh, indeed, because the, the other day I listened to an interview of um, uh, Timmermans, who is vice president of the commission. And he told that science tells us what we need to do. And technology tells us what is it that is possible to do? And between the two, there is a huge scope and, and huge, huge scope of knowledge, interesting pieces of information where everyone can find something interested for oneself. So working in uh, science diplomacy allows you not only to deal with administrative issues, but really deepen your knowledge in certain scientific field. Because you really inter interact with uh, people who are dedicated, who, who, who are knowledgeable, and uh, that inspires you. And the, the, the certain in encounters, certain interactions can even change your life and can even change your life dramatically because maybe some of you will uh, agree with me that uh, certain encounters with, with people, uh, certain situations in our life can change our life dramatically. So uh, this is an exciting journey. So, and I wish you success. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Genevina Sermanovskas for uh, the interview today and all of you to um, have participated and apologies for going over time. 
but I believe that the interview was um, so interesting that we didn't really feel like cutting it short. So thank you for your patience. Uh, should you have any further questions, please send us an email. And we are looking forward to seeing you in our upcoming webinars. And again, I would like to emphasize that on the 7th of July, the Horizon Europe uh, launch webinar organized by the uh, e-delegation to Japan uh, is already uh, on the portal of the delegation and also advertised on our portal. So please register for the webinar. We are very much looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much and goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.